Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. May the grace and peace of God our Father, and the love of the Divine Son, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. My dear brothers and sisters, we acknowledge our sins, so as to prepare ourselves worthily to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God, <clears throat> and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned. In my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and the saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me, the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. <clears throat> who show the light of your truth to those who go astray, that they may return to the right path. Give all who for the faith they profess are accounted Christians the grace to reject whatever is contrary to the name of Christ and to strive after all that does it honor. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, 
who lives and reigns with you in unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, just as from the heavens the rain and snow come down, and do not return there till they have watered the earth, making it fertile and fruitful, giving seed to the one who sows and bread to the one who eats, so shall my word be that goes forth from my mouth. My word shall not return to me void, but shall do my will, achieving the end for which I sent it. The word of the Lord. St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, I consider that the sufferings of this present time as are of nothing compared with the glory to be revealed for us. For creation awaits with eager expectation the revelation of the children of God. For creation was made subject to futility, not of its own accord, but because of the one who subjected it, in hope that creation itself would be set free from slavery to corruption and share in the glorious freedom of the children of God. We know that all creation is groaning in labor pains even until now. And not only that, but we ourselves, who have, who have the first fruits of the Spirit, we also groan within ourselves as we await for adoption, the redemption of our bodies. The word of the Lord. from the Holy 
Holy Gospel according to Matthew. On that day, Jesus went out of the house and sat down by the sea. Such large crowds gathered around him that he got into a boat and sat down. And the whole crowd stood along the shore. And he spoke to them at length in parables, saying, A sower went out to sow. And as he sowed, some seed fell on the path, and the birds came and ate it up. Some fell on rocky ground, where it had little soil. It sprang up at once, because the soil was not deep. And when the sun rose, it was scorched, and it withered for lack of roots. Some seed fell among thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked it. But some seed fell on rich soil and produced fruit, a hundred or sixty or thirty-fold. Whoever has ears ought to hear. The Gospel of the Lord. It seems from the Gospel accounts that people clearly enjoyed listening to the Lord whenever he spoke to them. He told them stories, stories that they could identify with, stories that they lived out in their everyday life. Stories that they always remembered. And we call these stories parables. The crowds were gripped by his speech. They even paid him great compliments on his speaking. They heard him speak. But how many listened? His parables, our Lord always addressed the decision to be made by his listeners, a change in their life. And 2,020 years later, we too are gripped by these same stories that we hear over and over again. We all remember the stories, the parables. Back then, so even today, the parables of the Lord, the stories of the Lord strike at the heart and should awaken within us a readiness to change one's thinking, change one's way of living. The parables never leave us in a neutral state. It always evokes some sort of emotion, some sort of change or lack thereof in us. It gives us a sense of confidence that we can change. And we have this power and the grace of God for its success. The set of parables which we will hear now for the next three weeks are parables about understanding and the growth of understanding. They're called the parables of the kingdom of God. But God's kingdom grows in us as our understanding grows and our cooperation with God's grace in our life increases within us different times in our life, different situations or circumstances mold us and how we hear these parables. And for some of us, we've heard these parables for 50 years or so. And every time we hear them, there's something new about them. We never get tired of hearing them because we hear them with different ears because of where we are at in our life's journey. A sower goes out to a field to sow. This is how the story begins. And of course, we all know the rest of the story about the sower who was so careless in throwing seeds to the point of being wasteful and contrary to anything that makes common sense. And throughout life, we know that we are different types of that soil that the Lord talks about. And so the question for us tonight is, what type of soil are we now? I think for most of us, we need to watch out for the third type of soil. Some seed fell among thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked it. We're not careful. We let the thorns attack us, and the thorns 
attack our faith. We can so easily get caught up in worldly anxiety. Not that we don't have things to worry about, indeed we do, but anxiety can choke the gospel in our lives by making us so fearful that it paralyzes us and we stop believing. If we have such good news, why aren't we happy? Why do we constantly discuss the news of the world so pessimistically, foretelling woes and disasters to come, always expressing worry and consternation? That's a thorn that can choke us if we allow ourselves to be so influenced by the anxiety of the world that we lose our sense of trust in God's providence. We lose our sense of trust in God himself. Perhaps another thorn that may choke our spiritual life is the lure of riches. We become more worried about our 401ks and our economy than we worry about our life and our eternal life. We become so absorbed in making money and watching sports and eating good food or pursuing hobbies. Somehow that's going to expect us to be saved through those pleasures of life. But we forget what we need to avoid so that we can attain eternal life. What type of soil are we now? Do we listen to the word of God in our life? Or do we just hear it? Does it come into us and are we absorbed by it so that we can grow? No matter how old we are, we can always grow in our faith. We can always grow in our compassion. We can always grow in our love. That we're never that old that it stops. The word of God comes into us do we really listen, or do we hear words? If I were to give you a test and ask you, what was the first reading all about? How many of you could answer? Or if we asked, what was the second reading about? The real question is, what was the opening prayer about? Do we listen to the word of God, or do we just hear words? Beware. Thorns of life are many, and they very easily can choke us out. But if we have trust and faith in God and truly listen to his word, we have no fear. So what is in competition with God in my life? What thorns are sticking in our flesh? And so we stand now to profess our beautiful faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men, for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins and look forward to the resurrection of the dead and life of the world to come. Amen. God gives us his love without condition. Humbly we hold up our needs in prayer. For our own country, that our leaders act with sound judgment 
that citizens work together cooperatively and do as they have been asked by the government to reduce infection rates, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the prayers and sacrifices of consecrated religious bear great fruit for the church and the world, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That those who suffer from physical and spiritual hunger be filled with healing goodness, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the souls of all the faithful departed from our parish who have gone before us in faith and love, may they receive the reward of their goodness. And let us remember in a special way at this Mass, Connie and Brita O'Sullivan. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. In the silence of our hearts, we present to God our particular intentions. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. O Lord God, bringer of the harvest, you give us every good thing. Grant what we ask in the name of Jesus Christ, who is Lord forever and ever. sacrifice in yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Look upon the offerings of the church, O Lord, as she makes her prayer to you, and grant that when consumed by those who believe, they may bring ever greater holiness through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for you laid the foundations of the world and have arranged the changing of times and seasons. You formed man in your own image and set humanity over the whole world in all its wonder to rule in your name over all you have made and forever praise you in your mighty works through Christ our Lord. And so, with all the angels, we praise you, as in joyful celebration we are clean. <laughs> of all holiness, 
Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. similar way, supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. From a history of faith. and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church, spread throughout the world. Bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope, Timothy our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, and with the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, with Saint Margaret, our beloved patroness, and all of the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages. We may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, for glory and honor is yours forever and ever. command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, O Lord, we pray, from every evil and graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we wait the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. O oh Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Let us pray. Having consumed these gifts, we pray, O Lord, that by our participation in this mystery, 
its saving effects upon us may grow. Through Christ our Lord. On Monday evening at 7 o'clock here in church, we will offer a rosary for those of you who wish to attend with exposition of the Blessed Sacrament uh, for peace and tranquility and justice in our country at 7 o'clock on Monday. Also, the bulletin, as you know, we can't give out anything, can't have anything on our tables, but the bulletin is, uh, we do have it every week, but you can access the bulletin information on, on our website. So for the um, different things that are happening, not that much, but what's ever happening is happening, so all that information will be on the bulletin. Have a blessed Sunday uh, with you and your family tomorrow. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth. The Mass is ended. Prayer to St. Michael. St. Michael, the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness the snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Hosts, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Salve Regina, Pater